Hello everyone, this is Panda Navigation Training. My name is Katie Bjornsson. I am the project manager overseeing the Panda project for Willits Technology. Uh, in this training, we're really gonna just give you guys a snapshot of how to access Panda, how to navigate the system, and how to find critical um, medical information on a client in the Panda system. In your training manual, we put some detailed information on what Panda is, what it stands for, why we're implementing it, um, I'm not going to cover that in training, so please review that. If you have any questions, please let me know. So we have two rollouts. We are rolling out Panda MU, which is going to go live May 1st at Woodward and Mingus Mountain Academy. Um, this go live is really focused on six SQL sites whose medical departments will be using Panda to attest to meaningful use in 2016. So the six programs are listed in your training manual. Obviously, Mingus and Woodward, you guys are going live first. There is a lot at stake here. You know, Meaningful Use is really a uh, Medicaid and Medicare program that awards incentives to providers for using certified electronic health records. So that is why Panda is getting certified right now, so that we can help SQL achieve meaningful use. There's a lot at stake here, um, potentially $1.5 million for SQL as an organization state and Medicaid contracts, which are also just as critical. So it is really important that we get Panda MU rolled out in 2016 so that we give these providers a chance to be successful with meaningful use. The goal is to get the medical department using Panda for 100% of their documentation. And really for Panda MU, only the medical and admissions teams will start documenting in Panda. All the other departments may be logging into Panda to access current medical information since it will no longer be updated in Willits. Um, but other than that, there will not be a whole lot of documentation taking place from any of the other departments. Fat Panda, that is what we have decided to call the full Panda offering that's going to start rolling out in 2017. This is going to include case management, clinical, QA, critical incidents on the direct care staff, there's just going to be a lot more departments involved in that rollout, and that's going to be in early 2017. Now, we know that it's not ideal to roll Panda out in two separate waves, but this was unavoidable. Um, once we started EMR certification and really started to understand the complexity and how time-consuming it is, we had to focus solely on the meaningful use and medical components for this first go-live. We also had to get the docs that are attesting to meaningful use on Panda for a minimum of 90 days in 2016. So as I said, we know this is not ideal, but this was really the only approach if we wanted to make sure the system was user-friendly and to be able to meet all the needs we had for meaningful use. Attendance and quiz. Super users at your sites are managing the Panda training rosters. Even if you're just watching this video or if you are attending um, training in person, you need to make sure you're signing a training roster. So please make sure you're getting with the super user and saying, hey, you know, I, I watched that training, sign off on it. That is your responsibility. There's also a second component. A quiz is required um, after you complete this training. We highly recommend you complete it within 48 hours of completing training. I recommend you do it immediately following the training just when the information is fresh in your mind. There is about five multiple choice questions. It's very straightforward. Everything is either covered in training or in your training manual. There is a link to the certification site for the quizzes at the end of your training manual. One note with that also, there are quizzes for Medical 1, Medical 2, Provider, um, all the different components. So please make sure you're selecting the quiz for Panda Navigation. Page 4 of your training manual talks about HIPAA and EHR data security. This is very important. Know every time you talk about HIPAA, everybody really understands the importance of that. We have to protect our clients' health information. The most important piece I think we've really been focused on is the minimum necessary standard, which is a key protection component of the HIPAA privacy rule. It basically means that you should not access anything in Panda that you do not need to access to do your job. Um, if you're assigned six clients in Panda, then you should only be accessing those six clients. Um, there are some safeguards in the Panda system. We do have an audit log that documents every client you access and every menu you view. This was required for certification, so that is the purpose of this. Um, it really can track every movement we make in the system. 
There's another safeguard where the system will automatically log you off if you're inactive in the system for five minutes. This is going to help us avoid, you know, clients or other people being in the Panda system logged in under your name. Very important that if you walk away from your computer, shut down Panda, shut down the website, make sure that you are logged out so that no one else can access it under your login information. There is some information on penalties in your manual. You guys know HIPAA is very serious. Just make sure that you're being aware and only accessing information that you need. Learning objectives, I feel like I touched on this a little bit at the beginning. This is really specifically created for non-medical departments just to provide an overview of Panda. We want you guys to be familiar with how the system is laid out and so that you can find the critical medical information that you're gonna need. All right, let's get logged in. So when you log into the Panda system, you're gonna log in using your SQL email and password. Once you get logged in, there's one step you're gonna to wanna to do the first time you log in. Click on your name in the upper right hand corner. Click on profile settings and double check your time zone. You want to make sure your time zone is set correctly because when you timestamp stuff in the system, you definitely want to make sure you're time stamping it accurately. If you want, you can also change your theme. There's a lot of different colors in here. I had to laugh when I saw the Christmas theme. Uh, we get around December, I'm sure people will be using that one. So if you'd like to have a different color on your screen, go ahead and select a different theme. I prefer black and white, so I'm going to continue with that. You will notice that I'm training out of the Panda Sandbox by looking in the upper left-hand corner. There's a little pile of sand with a shovel. There is a link at the end of your training manual to the Sandbox. Please get in the Sandbox and get more familiar with the system. It is really helpful just to get in and navigate and kind of just feel your way around um, even more than it is to actually be in training. So please be using that. All right, on page 7 of your manual, there's information on navigating the Panda system. All menu items that you will have access to will appear here on the left-hand side. Um, I'm logged in as myself, so there will be some menu items that you'll see that you guys won't have access to with regards to the Panda Navigation Security Scheme. Really is a read-only security scheme, especially when it comes to the health menu. There's really no reason to be able to do any documentation in the health component um, at this time, so you will have read-only access to the health area. I did put screenshots of all the different Panda icons in your manual. I think the three most important icons are the first three. Um, we have the green plus sign. You will always use this when you add new documentation to the system. The blue eye will allow you to view additional details on documentation that's already in the system. And if you need to edit documentation that's been entered into Panda, use the orange pen and paper icon. There are a few other icons there that you may see randomly without, throughout the system. I'm not going to cover those in detail, but just be aware of those. So let's talk about the client header. Um, let me start in client contacts. You'll notice I'm being prompted to select a client. I'm going to select my favorite test client, Ping Panda. So when I go to the client contact screen, you're going to see this little blue arrow in the upper right hand corner. If I click that arrow, it's going to give me the full client header. This is really available in almost all of the areas in the system where you will complete documentation. So be aware of this. This is going to contain critical information. It's kind of a snapshot of the patient, birth date, sex, where they're located, um, where they're placed within SQL, allergies if they have any medical insurance is listed here, and the medical alerts, which could include suicide risk or seizure disorders. So all that information is visible. Um, I think the picture is probably the, one of the most helpful things because I know that was something that was discussed a lot that we need the picture in more places because you guys deal with a lot of clients. So hopefully that is helpful to you guys. Required fields are marked with a red asterisk, so please be aware of that. The system will not let you save documentation if you do not complete the required field. Selecting a client, you just saw me select a client. Um, there's two ways to select a client. First, in this upper toolbar, if I click on this client up here, it's going to allow me to search for a client. I can type in just a few letters and it's going to limit that search for me. 
the item that you just saw and there's a screenshot in your manual, if you try to go to one of the menus without selecting a client first, you will be prompted to set a client. Also, the Panda homepage, if for any reason you get lost in the system, which I don't anticipate happening a lot, but if you want to get back to the main screen, you just click on the Panda in the upper left-hand corner. It takes you to the main screen. All right, I'm on page 11 of your training manual, Panda Client Menu. So after you complete this section of the training, you should be able to view and edit client demographic information and enter client contacts into the Panda system. So let's talk about the client menu. First, demographics, right on top, because we know it's going to be used frequently. From the demographics screen, you can see pretty much any details you're going to need on this client. Uh, features, we have preferences over here. We have home address, birth information. In the bottom left-hand corner is the SQL program information. And we also have client medical information over here on the right. So it's really easy to edit a field in here. Um, let's say that I have Ping's eye color incorrect. I'm going to click on that field. I'm going to change it to brown eyes. And I hit this checkbox. If I decide, you know what, I made a mistake, it needs to stay as blue eyes, then I would just X out and not save. But I want to save this, so I'm going to hit that checkbox, and it's going to update that field. You can easily do that anywhere in the system. Just click on the field, enter the information, and then save it. Let's talk about client contacts. That's the next item in the client menu. So Ping has quite a few client contacts in here. For Meaningful Use Go Live, we've asked the admissions team to enter in two contacts, the legal guardian and the emergency contact. That's it. Um, based on what the medical teams need, it was really only critical to them to have those two clients, or excuse me, those two contacts. So from here, I really do want to get this, this screen changed prior to going live with Fat Panda. Um, I would like to get the main contact phone number to be visible. I think that would be helpful. And there may be some other fields that we decide are helpful to have from this main screen. But for meaningful use, we kind of did the bare minimum. This was required for EMR certification. Currently, if I need to see Papa Bear's phone number, he's my emergency contact, I'm going to click on the edit button. That's going to take me into the existing contact information screen. You can see his address here on the left. I can see communication preferences. He can have full contact with the client, it appears here. Home phone, cell phone, contact type is father, contact rules noted as emergency contact. If I need to add a new client contact, I just click on that green plus sign. The search contacts functionality I think is going to be helpful over time when we have entered a lot of workers into the system. I know you guys work frequently with the same workers or you have you know a worker that has two or three clients placed at your site. Instead of having to enter that worker's information every single time, you can just search to see if that worker has already been entered and then select that uh, worker to add to your client contact list. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new contact. And let's put, we'll just go with caseworker. Let's be generic. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a cell phone number. And I need to make sure I'm completing this communication preferences. So caseworker can have full contact with our client. We did decide to make those required just because it is so critical um, that everybody knows the kind of contact that this person can have with our client. Contact type, I'll change it to caseworker. If I need to put any notes here, you know, use cell phone after 6 p.m. for emergencies, you can easily do that. So go ahead and save that. So very easy to add a client contact to Panda. Just an FYI, with regards to the client menu, when we go live with Fat Panda, all case management and clinical content will appear in the client section. So this menu is going to drastically expand as we add the new functionalities for documentation of therapy and treatment plans and so on and so forth. So let's talk about the health menu. I'm on page 14 in your training manual. So let's, the learning objectives for this section to be able to view and print the medical face sheet, 
to view information on sequel me medical encounters and external medical encounters, to view medical assessments, and to be able to review medical and psychiatric notes in the medical notes section. So I do want to tell you, you're going to see a lot of menu items here. This is not what's going to be visible to you. When you go to the health menu, you will just have the menu items that we are going to discuss right now. So let's start with the medical face sheet. You'll notice when I hit the medical face sheet, it doesn't launch a new page. Hopefully you can see in this lower left hand corner, I am using Google Chrome right now. Um, so Internet Explorer has a little bit different pop up that kind of appears in the middle of the screen here. But you'll receive your medical face sheet. I'm just going to click on it to open it up. And now I have my medical face sheet available. Medical face sheet is going to include the birth date, social security number, medical insurance, sequel location, uh, current medications the client is on, emergency contact information, medical alerts, and diagnosis. It's also going to contain the client's photo. Please note this diagnosis in bold is the primary diagnosis that's been documented. So with regards to this medical face sheet, we basically created this as a supplement to the face sheet that's available in the Willet system. We know that everybody needs, you know, if you send a client off campus for a medical visit, it's really helpful to have kind of a snapshot of all of their health information in one place. So that is what we decided to do. All right, we covered the medical face sheet. Let's talk about medical uploads. So medical uploads are basically going to be a place where all medical documentation that is not completed in Panda is uploaded. So this could be past medical records, this could be immunization records, um, it could be outside notes from another doctor. There is just a lot of options that could appear under this medical upload section. If I want to view a medical upload, I would just click on this download cloud. Let's pick this one. You'll notice again the document is appearing in my lower left hand corner since I'm using Chrome. I'm just going to click on that document. The Word document is opening up right now. I'm going to grab it because it's on my other screen. And this is basically just a generic medical record that I pulled off the internet. But I'm trying to make a point that you can go in here, hit that download cloud, and view whatever has been um, uploaded to the Panda system. All right, I feel like that's pretty straightforward. Let's talk about external medical appointments. So external medical appointments is going to contain information on outside medical and dental appointments. The workflow that's recommended is when a client returns from an appointment, the nursing staff or medical staff are going to complete documentation by just adding a new external medical appointment documentation to this section. If I come in here and I need information on Panda's dentist appointment, I'm going to click on the view icon and I'm going to get all the details that have been documented. Panda has a clean, had a cleaning and examination, examination, one cavity found, follow up in two weeks to get the cavity filled. If I want to go back to that list, I can click on this little menu icon and go back to list client medical exams. So very easy to see the details. Once you click that eye icon, it will give you all details that have been documented for that external medical appointment. Medical notes is next. I'm on page 19 in your training manual. So all medical notes are going to live in this section. This could include psychiatric notes, nursing notes, um, notes for a physical exam, um, notes for a phone call between a doctor and a legal guardian. Uh, it could really encompass a lot of different things. So to view the information, as you probably guessed, you're just going to click on this blue eye icon. Let me do this nursing note here, patient seen for a headache. So I have my note here. Headache lasting over two hours, vitals were taken, um, provided PRN medication, check back with patient after 45 minutes, and headache was improved. So I can see the details on that medical note. You can use this functionality to view the next note, previous, 
and the, um, the next note or previous note. I'm going to go back to my list. I do want to note, please be careful using that next note and previous note functionality because my understanding is that the case management and clinical folks really only needed access to psychiatric type of notes in this area of the system. And you definitely want to make sure you're not accessing something that you don't need to see. So I think that this area, you know, it is really critical to be thinking about that minimum necessary standard. Let's talk about referral orders. Again, you guys are not going to see all these different menus. You're basically going to see the list of items that is in your training manual. So this screen is going to allow you to see every referral order that has been entered into Panda. Uh, if there is consultation needed or testing needed, they need to go see a neurologist or orthopedic doc. If I want to view additional information, I'm going to click on that eye icon. You can see the reason for the visit was ankle injury. This is the provider that they saw. Private writer's phone number is entered in there. So pretty basic information on that order. You can print a referral order if needed. I think that's more of a nursing functionality, but that functionality is available if needed. All right, next I got the problem list. So the problem list really outlines the most important health problems that are currently facing a patient. It should include ongoing and active problems that a provider is working on with the patient. Um, one of the providers at uh, Mingus had mentioned that this could be focused more on behavioral health type issues like self-harming behavior or isolation. Um, really each site is up to them to decide what kind of problems they wanna document in here. For ping, I have a medical problem as asthma and I also have a more behavioral based problem of self-harming behavior. To see additional information, you just click on that blue eye icon. All right, I'm on page 22 in your manual, medical assessments. It's our last section. So I'm in the health menu still. I'm going to go to medical assessments. So medical assessments is really going to be a spot where a lot of different types of information can be found. TB testing information will be here. Um, I know you see HIV history on my screen right now, but that is really a lockdown assessment that's only visible by medical staff, so please be aware of that. Um, this could be the mental status exam performed by a psychiatrist, the suicide scale, um, nursing assessment. Let me just show you all of the items that are available in here currently. This list is growing and growing, so any of these items could be appearing in the medical assessment section. You probably guessed that if you want to view additional information, click on that blue eye icon. It's going to actually show you that medical assessment. And my mental status exam, you can see the check boxes that the provider completed as they completed this uh, assessment. So with regards to Go Life support, what do you do if you have questions about Panda? First and foremost, you definitely want to be reaching out to your super users. Each department has been um, assigned to have at least one super user, ideally two super users, and they should be used as your first line of support. So please seek out super users at your site if you have questions about the Panda system. Use your teammates. Everyone definitely learns technology at a different pace, so please help each other out through this process. Um, we know this is a big change for everybody, so please be supporting each other through this. If a super user or another teammate cannot answer your question, please send an email to panda at teamwillance.com. This email will actually create a support ticket um, and will allow us to track issues or questions that are coming in. Someone from SQL or Willits will follow up with you either by phone or by email. Um, the plan right now is for the Willits staff to manage you know, the more technical based issues, login issues, if you're getting an error in the system. Um, Amber and I are going to be managing more of the training type issues since we've spent the most time on the front end of the system. With your Panda email, please make sure your contact information is included. Hopefully everybody has that in their signature. Tickets will be handled based on priority. And high priority tickets, I'll tell you, the only tickets I could consider high priority are going to be patient safety types of issues, which I immediately think of something to do with medications. 
Um, other than that, I really can't think of any other issues that would be super high priority. If you are involved in some sort of high priority issue, then please um, document that in the email, but make sure that we're not using high priority for anything that is not truly a high priority patient safety issue. There is a Panda suggestion box, so we definitely do not want the Panda email used for suggestions about the system. You know, we wish the system would do this, or we wish we could access this from this part of the system. We've created the Panda suggestion box on the SQL portal. If you click on the Panda project, you will get a pop-up um, with a super cool orange graphic that has a little Panda in it and a little suggestion box. Please add your suggestions to the SQL portal. Um, we definitely want to hear feedback from you guys. We want to know what you think about the system. We want to know if you have suggestions about the system. We've gathered a ton of feedback through our expert committees over the last several months to make the system what it is right now. So we really appreciate your guys' input and insight. So please use that Panda suggestion box and not the Panda email if you have suggestions or requests. I mentioned earlier we do have a Panda sandbox. There is a link in your training manual. You can really do anything you want in the sandbox. Log in, search around, get comfortable with the system. Um, your security will be the same in the sandbox as it is in the live production environment. Uh, one thing to note, the automatic log off in the sandbox is set to 10 minutes um, just because it, it does not contain live client data. But with the real live system, it will be a five minute timeout. Last reminder about the attendance and quiz, please sign a PANDA training roster if you have attended this training. Also, there's a link to the quiz. You can easily go to the um, getcertifiedpanda.com and go to your quiz. Let's see if I can get this launched quick. So when you log in, you're gonna see the big PANDA logo, which I love, um, become a certified PANDA user. So we definitely want you to successfully complete the certification quiz below. You are attending Panda Navigation Training right now, so you would click on Quiz 1. You're going to enter your name here and select your location from the drop-down. And then you just scroll through, enter these five questions, or answer these five questions, and hit the Submit button. Really basic, really straightforward. I do recommend that you do it as soon as possible just because information is fresh in your mind. All right, well, that's all I have for everybody. Thank you so much for your time today. If you got any questions, uh, please reach out to me at katie at teamwillets.com. Thank you.